do this like 99 times. <laughs> Feels like the first time. So. There you go. Guys, welcome to the now back to the monthly edition of Roll with the Fox. First Friday of every month, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. So this is episode nine. So as you can see, I couldn't follow directions. We had a tiny little marker in the middle. So now the guys made it huge, so I can't miss it. <laughs> you guys, just kidding. We we start to divide up the, the academy for, you know, to for everybody to have a safe space to train. So let's get right to it. Today we're gonna we have a full program. We're gonna start with two two things. Um, guys, if you have questions, start putting them on. Comment, you know, and and uh, hopefully we'll get if we don't get to answer it today, we'll get to answer it next time. All right. So, guys, the first question was uh, regarding it from John P. Was it escape from from the mount? So, the guy on the bottom being mounted, and the question was, what is it called? That's, that's one thing. One thing I try not to ask me names because, as you know, I'm very bad with that. But the uh, um, the escape was uh, just basically one arm goes in. Go ahead. So, to me, this I would not use this as a go-to move. It is an opportunistic escape, and sometimes I will do opportunistic escapes, meaning that it's not something that should work all the time, especially if the guy on top is, is fairly sophisticated in terms of his jiu-jitsu game. The problem with that is anytime I feel the guy sticking, so if I'm attacking the head and I feel, so right now I'm putting a lot of weight towards his hips. I'm driving down. All right, so if I feel this happening, I know that he can force it. So, but I can just slow him down enough that in M MMA, he, he, he may take one or two pops. But in Jiu Jitsu, if I feel that happening, what I'm gonna do is attack the neck. So anytime that I feel that somebody is digging down, deep down, I will attack the neck. So the best plan for Enrique to, to, to accomplish this then is as he's digging down, as one, one arm goes in. So I'll, I'll make sure that it makes it slower. Now, if he tucks his head in, so now I can attack his neck. All right, so I will just make it a little bit uglier. And you know, when you attack the neck, you forearm, on the nose. Uh, you don't want to do that to your favorite training partners because it is pretty ugly. Uh, but as Gary says, you know, if you're defending rear naked choke with your face, then your face is fair game. <laughs> so it gets, it, it's quite brutal. But again, I will use it if the opportunity comes. Uh, usually I would do it as sort of if, if the guy is high up and kind of the leg is up. But if, if I'm closer to his hips and I start to set it up, tuck your head in. So I will just make it a little bit more brutal on the face and I will try to trap his arm. So even if, if I can't finish, I trap his arm. And now, go ahead, what's, what's your next move? What's your next move? Yeah. So, Again, I would not call it, uh, I would not go to that as my go-to escape, but if it's if there's a hole and you can get out of that, uh, get out of the mound, punching one arm through and just spinning around, do it. But that means that the guy on top made a mistake. This to me is very similar to, uh, you know, when you have somebody in your guard and the guy decides to do double under. So when this happens, go ahead. Do, do the whole thing? Yeah. And my guard is passed. Oh. <laughs> or <laughs> is, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was passed. I fortunately was able to recover with a strong hand. <laughs> yeah, we have flashbacks now. Um, Are you getting flashbacks now? But before I do that, 
So anytime you have somebody in your guard and he does double under, just squeeze your thighs together and cross your ankles. And now basically he will, all he needs to do is just go further down to get it done. But it just buys you enough time where you can attack the neck. All right, so anytime you play guard, the guy goes double under, I just make my legs heavy and pinching them together so he cannot, all I'm trying to do is delay him long enough for me to, allow, uh, to attack his neck. I'm like in the mount where, where he's mounted he, when he can tuck in his head. If he goes double under and tucks in his neck, he has no power to start to lift and try to get your hips up to pass your guard. So generally speaking, when they go double under, their neck is gonna be wide open. Close to your legs, cross your ankles, slow him down to the point where you can attack the neck, and now it doesn't matter that he's got double under. James Bartko is saying, uh, greetings, I am a white belt who is struggling because I have yet to figure out how to not roll on the middle of my back, especially when I am trying to triangle or unlock somebody. Any hints? What do you mean roll, uh, roll in the middle of the back? You know, when you, when you roll. Maybe he's just flat. Uh, I'm not sure if I, can, if I understand your question correctly. You can specify? Yes, if you can clarify, specify, we can try to answer. And while we're waiting for that, everybody's I'm, I'm excited. I'm trying to come up with, with, <laughs> with, with a word that would rhyme with to clarify and specify, but I couldn't, it wasn't coming fast enough. I guess I should have had more coffee. And while we're waiting for that, everybody is excited to see you guys again. Yes, guys, we're back and we're going to do this every single month. I hope that the situation continues to improve around the world and in the United States to the point where we do not have to go into season two of the Antivirus Edition. We already did four seasons of that. No, that's <laughs> not. That was one season. Um, so if you could please clarify what, what you mean by that. And, and if, if you want, you could always you know, post a video in the comments so we could, we'll review and we can try to answer next time uh, for a roll with the fox. He says, uh, seem to be struggling getting up on my shoulders. Oh, on your shoulders. I guess getting his hips high. Oh, okay. okay. It's just, you know, so uh, anytime you're, you have somebody in your guard, okay, you want to make sure you're not laying down like this. This, there's a lot of friction on the ground and it's hard to move. So you'll have to learn how to sit up. This takes some time to, to figure this things out, but I can get up on my shoulders. I can make, you know, very little, you know, very little of my body's now on the surface of the mats. So that's something that you're gonna have to uh, drill, okay? Um, so anytime somebody's in my guard, I wanna have as little of my torso on the ground as possible. Anytime also when I'm when I'm posting, I try to avoid the floor. I'd rather post on him. So I'd rather make my movement off off him rather than off the floor. But that will just take time. Uh, understand that as I say all the time, Rome was not built in a day. Every time you come to class, just make a couple of breaks. Just make things a little bit better. So try to do, you know, kind of almost like crunches. So anytime you, you play guard, you almost want to be, almost always want to be in a crunched up position. Okay? Now, the second, uh, uh, second technique that I want to cover today is arm and guillotine. We've covered it in one of the episodes. Adolfo Ferranda has, uh, I'm sure, there's an index. I can't find it personally, but, but Mike swears. Adolfo swear that it's there. Uh, I might have to get the YouTube app, which I did get. However, I hated it, so I deleted it. And I'm back to just going to YouTube through Safari. So if you like me, you probably can't find it, but everybody else can. So we did cover uh, arming guillotine, I believe, in one of the episodes. Uh, but I want to go over that again because uh, there's some dramatical differences where that arm is positioned. I know. Two? 19. <laughs> 19? No. Really? 19. Yeah, there's a bonus at the end. 
<laughs> and if you watched all 99 episodes, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right, so let's not have a recurrence of that, but let's look at it. So when you're hitting an arming guillotine, you have to take stock of where your opponent's arm is. So let's turn this way just so they can see. Um, so when I'm, if his arm is outside my torso, the finish is going to be very similar to a no arm in guillotine. If you look, you know, if you just Google fluid BJJ or go to my website or, or you will, or go Carl Pravic guillotine, Silver Fox guillotine, you will find the position. So the position is going to be almost, I'm trying to get almost at least the torso wise, almost perpendicular. And I have the forearm is going to be on one, on his right carotid. And the fat part of my thumb is going to be on his right carotid. So the finish is going to be like a uh, no arm in guillotine, all right? So if he goes around my torso, first of all, I want it's uh, this is okay because he's not he's touching my leg, but he's not controlling it. So what I'll do is is I'll get on my side and I'm going to finish. It's going to be again same finish like no arm in guillotine when his arm is around your torso. Okay? Because when his arm is around your torso, he's not protecting his left carotid with his shoulder. Because he's, he's, he's too busy trying to take you down. So we still have the same three principles in play. So those are, okay. <laughs> Enrique did not stretch it up. So what I'm having, three principles, again. He cannot control my right leg because I'm guillotining with my left arm, so the opposite leg, okay? My body positioning, you see oh, my torso is almost perpendicular. And most importantly, the shoulder forward. If you start to see his hair, that's a sign of almost sure failure, okay? So very, very important distinction between when his arm is across and now he's using his shoulder to protect his karate. So again, if I if it's arm in but his arm is trying to grab your hips, grab your torso, he's not protecting this karate and therefore the finish is the same as no arm in guillotine where I'm cutting off both karates with my left arm. All right, so my body positioning the leg is always going to be the same regardless. Um, my body positioning is dramatically different from the other arm in guillotine where his arm is protecting the carotid and therefore my body positioning is going to change. Everything else, the leg, the opposite leg, and the shoulder forward is the same. So one big element changes out of those three. Do you have any questions on this so far? I uh, just found out it's Anand's birthday. Oh, yeah. Right. Happy birthday, Anand. Happy birthday. And a question is from Elat Sapir. He was asking, uh, have you seen the UFC fight with uh, Green uh, when he did an arm triangle from the bottom of half guard? He did it to uh, Gian Vellante. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was John's mistake. Uh, I, I think just... Uh, you know, if you, you, don't forget a lot of these guys when they take the fights on, on, on relatively short notice and, you know, uh, due to the lockdown, they're not quite training the way they used to train in the camps. It was just, it, it was, that was just a mistake. That should not have happened. He was asking, how would you counter that? Doing MMA. We are. No. This is MMA. This is MMA. So one more time. So, you know, uh, like I said, some of the guys just not, you, you could see that they're not necessarily in shape. And, you know, that's why John went to a higher weight class. He normally, he used to fight at, at uh, a light 
light heavyweight now he's he's heavyweight so you know it's it's when you can't train or your camp is not the same like you normally would have um, you know you you gas out quicker you know all right guys I ask you this now hit Enrique no <laughs> or arm lock This is MMA, so the answer is both. <laughs> and then. Tap, tap, tap. Yeah. Or I would take his back. So, that, you know, sometimes, you know, especially when you gassed, mistakes happen. So we need, we need to make sure the same thing with. There's certain techniques that should work consistently, and there's certain techniques that just happen, and it's just they happen because somebody made a mistake. So we don't want to spend too much time on those because, uh, again, this is uh, uh, an unusual submission because of that. And back to the arm and guillotine. Jim Taylor is asking, do you keep his arm high? No, he does it. He does it for you because. Again, there's a distinction when he keeps his arm low and uses his shoulder to protect his carotid, it's going to be a different finish. We're going to go over that next. But this is a decision he makes. So say maybe he shot in on me and I can feel he's not controlling my right leg. Okay? He's, he's touching, but he's not controlling. I can easily just fold. And I have the same finish. Let's look at it one more time from this angle. So, so same finish like I would with no arm. But he's the one who decides where that arm goes. But usually when that happens, he's, you know, usually he's still trying to finish the takedown. So he's over, his arm is overextended. He's not protecting his neck. Uh, you know, sometimes people just get wetted to to the uh, to the takedown and, and don't realize the danger that they're in. So if that's the reaction you get, you're gonna hit him with an arm and guillotine because I can't, by the time his head is already so close, I cannot get in no arm. So you have to just take whatever he gives you, but understand that his left carotid is not protected by his shoulder and therefore the finish is the same. And uh, AG26 Fly is saying, I would like to thank Professor Fox and the team. The sharing has made my techniques improve. Mini Fluid BJJ. Thank, uh, can't thank you guys enough. God bless you guys and please keep it on. Augie from, from Singapore. Nice. Thank you. Appreciate that comment, guys. Guys, we got a lot of messages from people all over. You know, I, I've, we've gotten them on Facebook, on Instagram. Or I, I got some handwritten ones. Uh, so, uh, what, uh, you know, People are actually testifying that uh, the visual learning actually helped them. Like I said, it was we've gotten multiple messages from people saying, "Hey, listen, you know, my I went back. I was actually use, able to use some of the stuff I've seen in, in the episodes, and my training partners, my friends, started to think that I was secretly training in some dungeon or maybe in a cave in the woods, like the monks back in the day of Shaolin Kung Fu temples." All right, so. Let's move on. So now let's look at a, an arming guillotine where the guy is now more defensive, where he just, he starts to, he's too busy protecting his neck. So you manage to wrap the head, but you can't quite get him to drive forward. So when he turtles up and starts, to yeah, it starts to tuck in his head. So I have a good connection. Guys, remember, we always try to support the leg or the foot or the hand or the arm that ha does the heavy lifting, okay? So in this case, it's gonna be my left arm choking him, so I'm not gonna use my left arm to grab my right arm. The left arm has the hard job, so always support the limb that's doing the heavy duty work, all right? So, as I'm, so now I realize that he's kind of defending pretty well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive into him to push his elbow out of the way. So it's gonna be very difficult when he's posting heavy on it, right? 
So you could always drop your right arm. If you choke it with your left, obviously, you choke it with the right, it's going to be opposite. But So right now, I can't push it in. It's very difficult. But if I drive in just to get it off the floor a little bit, I can. Now, as soon as that happens, I start to drive in, and I now start to isolate his arm with my leg. Usually when I get here, I'm not happy with it. All right? So I'll drive in and make sure that it's it's good. When that happens, you're going to feel sort of uh, looseness or slack in your left arm. So make sure your left arm goes in deep. Now I'm ready to fold. So I'm going to fold. So this time, instead of being on my side, I'm on my back. But there's out of the three principles, it's my right leg still free. Okay? My body positioning changes dramatically. But the shoulder forward is the same. So now I will anchor myself and use my body to push. So what I'm doing is by bringing my body under, I'm basically pushing his left arm, left arm into the carotid with my torso. Okay? So let's look at it from a different angle. So now he's decided to defend. Even if he tucks in his neck, that's okay. So I, I focus on my shoulder forward. I drive in, get the arm out of the way. When I do, I block it with my left leg. I'm not, this is, you don't go attack right now yet. You wait, now you don't wait, but basically you set it up more. You drive it in deeper. When you drive it in the second time deeper, you will feel looseness in your left arm. So make sure your left arm goes deep. And then you just, I hook in and, and bring my body in to make sure the choke is heavy. All right. You look kind of like that. That's really good. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mike just gave me the, the sc I scored 10 points. I was at 10 minutes left. You get both, both. Nice. <laughs> A lot of peers asking, when I'm trying to do your guillotine, I find myself that my body weight is on the opponent's neck. Is it a good thing or am I doing something wrong? Which, uh, which guillotine? Which arm in, no arm in? It doesn't matter, your guillotine. Yeah, you always, it's always good to have your, it, it, here's the reality. So let's do the, the I'm gonna do the arm in the, the last one one more time so you guys can see the angle. Um, let's start out here so we finish. So again, I drive in. You can see, can you see Enrique's hair? No. I anchor and I use my body to push in. So that's the arm in where he's using his shoulder to protect the karate. Now, let's look at no arm and guillotine, the one that I do. Um, you actually, it's actually a good thing to have your body almost, yeah. This is, this is good, yeah. And anytime he starts to circle to my left, to his right, it's, it's, it's actually makes it way, way harder. Do we have any questions on this? Because I want to actually point out one more thing. If we do the arm in where he's using his shoulder to protect the karate. Charlie is asking, uh, when going for the guillotine or arm and guillotine, can you put your head next to his shoulders as a wedge? Uh, I'm not quite sure what that means. No, the, the way I turn my head is uh, so. So the first one, do the first one. So I put my head in. For, I'm looking at kind of away from him. The reason is when you start to look at him, it basically it starts to come apart. So usually, not usually, but sometimes people look at things or look at their opponent when they should be looking away. Understand that when you're looking away, look what happens to my left arm. If I'm so look, look what happens. It just naturally starts to tighten. 
if I start to look towards you, it starts, we're talking about tiny little holes. And sometimes if you got a tough guy, that tiny little hole is the difference between you getting the submission and you having your arm burn out and now you have to let go, now you're on the bottom. So that's why you should be looking away when you do the no arming guillotine. This is the positioning. As when I start to, so I keep it very tight. Look what happens to my torso, my arm. It's the arm doesn't get loosened up, but the torso, the shoulder pressure starts to come off. Okay, so I'm not sure if I answered your question. And uh, Olu26 Fly is asking, any difference for the grips for arming? No. I, I don't I don't use the I usually I I use the same grips. I used to to get get the arm out of the way. I used to use a gable grip or bolt cutter grip just to but the problem is now I'm not in a position to apply the guillotine. I have to regrip. I don't want to regrip at those especially critical moments. In critical moments, if you have to regrip, a lot of times you lose it. So now I, I basically have the same grip and keep that grip because now when I clear it, then I confirm with my, with my knee, drive it in deeper, and now I'm ready to guillotine without having to change my grip. So try to avoid grip changing, particularly in, in critical points. So if you see techniques, I'm not a fan of, of techniques where the guy you know shows you 18 grip changes to to nail somebody. Uh, you know, if you have to regrip 18 times, there's a very high probability that something's going to go wrong. And and Jim Taylor is asking, when attacking a regular guillotine, will you drive the person down if they are defending and keep attacking the guillotine, or just maintain side control? Uh, it depends. That's a good point. I uh, I don't insist. People are always asking me like, well. What happens if he's tucking his chin in? Well, if he's tucking, if somebody's tucking their chin in, they're not driving into you. What that means is that a lot of times you don't have, unless you already got the grip, if your forearm kind of clears their jawline, you're good, go. But if it didn't, you're not gonna get it in. So don't try to force something that's not there. Just, if, if somebody starts to, uh, you know, so if Enrique starts to, yeah, I'm just gonna drive in. now. Right now, I don't feel good about the guillotine, so what I'm gonna to try to do is change. So, it depends. If sometimes, when uh, I get on top, um, I still have a good wrap around his neck. If that's the case, I will continue to apply the guillotine, but be it one-handed guillotine or be it a, a high elbow. But if, uh, if, uh, I don't have a good wrap of the neck. I will basically just just change to something else. You can see that changing into the dars was extremely easy. It's a very easy transition. So always try to use sort of uh, the uh, the submission that he's kind of handing you in a platter. All right. I want to go over one more thing because with the arming guillotine where he's defending his uh, his. Um, left karate with, uh, with his shoulder. So as we're doing this, as I'm going through this, and I drive in, before I tighten up, once I tighten up, it's good. But before I tighten up, sometimes people just sit to their hip. That's not gonna happen. Go ahead, sit to that hip. Oh, yeah, yeah, fine. Sit to the other hip for a second. And that's why I said, that it, if, if he sits to this hip, I, I, I have a very easy transition into anaconda. All right, but if he sits to the other other hip, yeah, that will sometimes happen. If that's the case, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> I basically transition into his back because that that can happen. It's not really. It's something that uh, he may do because it's unexpected, but I already expect it. So, <laughs> so that's not going to help him. So it's a very easy transition to their back, but people will sometimes do it because when they get caught in, in a like real deep trouble, sometimes they will do some things that, you know, sometimes may work if, if you try to do something unexpected, but fortunately I already expected. And uh, we have Hobie saying greetings from Tokyo. He says, what are the most common errors or problems when applying the guillotine for a beginner? 
your shoulder is not forward. That's the single biggest problem. Single biggest problem is, so you have to have your shoulder forward. If you can see your training partner's hair, chances are it's failing. Really focus on your shoulder forward. It's the same thing like if I'm on top of cross side, but anytime you see, Enrique has a decent amount of hair right now. So it doesn't matter what I'm, whether I'm doing. Can you see any of his hair? Can you turn? Can, can, you may not be able to see because my head is in the way. So turn. Can you see his hair? I know, that one I don't care. But if you see his hair coming out under your, under your shoulder, under your armpit, that's a problem. That's a problem. It's probably the single biggest reason for failure. You will see guys in the UFC that are very high level fighters that will make that mistake over and over and over and that is the single biggest problem for failing to finish a guillotine or at least use it to sweep the guy. Because if you have the shoulder forward, you do not see his hair, you're controlling his head. If you control his head, you will able to be able to follow up, either to finish him or, or sweep him. And two more questions before we close out. Ryan D'Souza is asking, I've been trying split guard. My partners know I need to get my feet on their hips. When they are in my closed guard, they hunker down and hold on to my thighs to stop me from shrimping. Any tips? Like I said, guys, if they're not giving you what you're seeking, they're giving you something else. They have, like right now, if they're, so I lift my hips, hold on to my, drill this. Yeah. They have to, they have to, they have to give you something. So guys, don't forget, especially if you've been training for a few years, Start to look for other attacks they're giving you while they're defending the one you chose to, to start with. And Adolfo Ferranda is asking, Fox, I'm starting to experiment with closed guard attempts from bottom, from the bottom of closed guard drills, but so far been unable to get proper arm grip, so I just grab the pelts, so I'm left with nothing to hold. There's another part to the question. It says, where can I go from here as it's easy to pass the side control for him? I've seen you use five-finger guillotines in this scenario. Are there other options? Yeah, if, you, if you're training with the gi, you know, anytime, if I, if I can't get the arm, usually you can. So if, if Enrique was wearing a gi, so, so now I have the gi, all right? So now I can threaten cross-collar choke. So now what happens, he starts to turn, like he starts to protect that side. Now I'm controlling his arm. He's gonna take it away from me, I know that. So as he does, now I have Uri Gatami on one side. So anytime you, you oh, are we doing this? <laughs> so what I'm saying is you can't attack with a single purpose single attack in mind. You have to start to think in terms of combinations. This is a recurring theme, guys, today, as you can see, that people say, well, I wanna do this, and he stops me. You have to start paying attention. What else is he giving you? That's why, as you progress through Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you have to start to think attacking in combination. It's sort of like a boxer asking his coach, like, well, coach, I wanna knock him out with my jab, but he keeps slipping his head. Well, guess what? You hit him with an uppercut, and then you hit him with, with a cross, and then you hit him with a hook. It's the same exact thing. You're expecting sort of a knockout punch or a submission with the initial attack. Anybody that's been training jiu-jitsu for a couple months, at least they will know that the first one, okay, I got to stop this. But they don't have the knowledge necessarily, or, you know, it depends who's training, you know, more and, and who has better execution. In their defense, they're giving you something else. So start to pay attention to what they're giving you. Because as soon as you realize and, and sort of identify what they're giving you, that's your clue to what your next attack should be. 
And if you can't figure out what the next tack should be, then you should tune into the next Roll Up with the Fox episode 10. All right? So at least identify what is he giving you when you attack the first one, he takes the first one away from you. All right, so that's the first step. What else is he giving you? How is he reacting? Because depending on their reaction, we can take them apart. And we're out of time, guys. So, guys, I don't remember. I didn't check the date for the next one. What is the first Friday in August? Maybe somebody can just type it in quickly while, while I'm talking. So, guys, please like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Everything is Silver Fox BJJ. Hard to forget. All right, guys. We'll see you next time, next month, August, whatever it is, the first Friday of August. All right, guys, stay well, and I hope to see you soon. Duffel says the 7th. August 7th.